hydrogenous sediment. Let's get going here. Hydro meaning water. These are dissolved materials that have been forced out by chemical reactions. Chemical reactions such as those that form the ever popular and delicious rock candy. Rock candy formed is in a way that you make a super saturated sugar solution, then you cool it down, stick a stick in there, and it gives the sugar water something to nucleate on and turn into literally hydrogenous sediment. It's worth mentioning that in most hydrogenous sediment, we're talking about chemical reactions that are actually forcing the precipitates out of the solution. So we have things in the solution that would normally be hanging out in there, but you actually have these weird extra chemical reactions that force them out. Uh, that term is usually called leaching, when things are seeping sort of in and out of solution. So there's a nice diagram, does a really nice job showing it. So you have a solution, here it is, everything is mixed in. You have it super saturated or to the point where things are not really water soluble, you have a suspension. You can see that you've got all these little particles floating around in here, and then down here at the bottom you have a big pile of the particles. Now eventually these particles are all going to settle down to the bottom. That's where they're going because, you know, gravity is a thing. So there they go. They're going down and eventually your water column will look like the third one over here. So you can see you have the, uh, all the sediment is down here at the bottom. That's then called the precipitate, right? Because it precipitated out of the solution. Just like rain precipitates out of the cloud, the clouds are solution. It can't hold the rain no more. So it comes on down and makes my basement flood. Same thing here. Now it's all come out once it is all, once all the solute has come out of the solution, and it's no longer a solution because it doesn't have anything mixed in, so we call it the supernate, or supernate, if you're feeling like Nate should be a superhero. Now some of you may be thinking all these are pretty unimportant because they make up a very small proportion of the marine sediments on the world, but you would be wrong because they're found in many different places, and many of them are worth money. So even though it's a very small amount of the sediment, you get lots and lots and lots and lots of oceanic research. Some of the ones that are uh, big here, manganese nodules are worth a fair amount of coin. Phosphates are uh, pretty valuable. Carbonates are, uh, they're the most common kind, so they're the least valuable, but you still find a lot of good things in the carbonates. And then metal sulfides, like those found at our hydrothermal vents, especially the black smokers, these are rare metals, these are expensive metals. Everybody wants some, and uh, you're not gonna get it. So here's a picture that you can only see when we zoom, zoom, zoom it into it. So you can actually see this. So this is what we call a manganese nodule. It's made out of the element mostly manganese, which is pretty, pretty uh, expensive. Uh, for the most part, they tend to form up, and you can see here's a cross section one. You see this hollow space on there. In the inside, that's a manganese nodule. You can see all this nice manganese over here, which is a very, 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 very rare element. They form kind of slowly, or they'll be berries. 30% of those manganese nodules are manganese dioxide, which is a cool thing. 20% of it is iron, which is a very valuable metal. And there's many, many other kinds of expensive metals in there. Many of them form in the little spurts, so they all of a sudden be hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, manganese nodule. Hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, doing nothing, manganese nodule. And on and on like that. Again, they do form slowly, but they tend to form uh, all sort of at once. So here's a nice picture. Uh, some of the other metals that you were asking about, those would be uh, copper, nickel, and cobalt. Cobalt, super rare very expensive, very, very valuable in industrial applications, especially nuclear ones. Here's a guy uh, with a big old cage and you see all these things down here. I'll bet you can guess what they are, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. They're manganese nodules. Manganese. Here's a picture showing where the majority of the world's manganese nodules are found. You'll notice a lot of them are happening in the Pacific Ocean. Many of them are happening in the tropics regions that is because of the warmer waters. You've got more chemical reactions happening. So you have these, uh, uh, all these hot spots, all these um, seamounts in the area. Over here too, you'll see some of, a lot of them forming right off the coast of America, and then more of them forming off the coast of South America, and some coming off of uh, Africa. 
All right, what's really kind of cool is uh, you have large amounts of manganese nodules. We know that they're there, and we mine them because they're worth lots of money. All right, phosphates, very, very good in fertilizer. Uh, many of them are found in underneath the columns that are marking areas of very high productivity. So you have these zones where a lot of sea life is, and you can find phosphates down at the bottom of these zones. So the biologist in me, uh, you know, can't help but make sure that you notice that that means there's tons and tons of algae and microbes doing algae and microbe things, and when they die, they've got a large amount of phosphates. Think about our phosphate cycle going back to biology with it. And again, they're going to have lots and lots of uh, phosphorus. One of the things you may not know about phosphates is, is they're pretty good for making these things, you know, fireworks and stuff. So, phosphates, yay. For those of you that are wondering why we should get them other than just fertilizer. There are also carbonates. Carbonates mostly come in the series. You have calcium carbonate. So you have ergonomite, you can have calcite, and you can have oolites. Light is uh, meaning litho, oo meaning egg. So literally these are egg rocks. What's really kind of cool about these is they actually nucleate very, very slowly over time and form these really beautiful uh, egg-like things. And there's a very, very small calcite layers usually sort of dispersed in there. So these are the three main types. You have aragonite, calcite, and oolites, all these containing precious calcium carbonate, which will react with hydrochloric acid and make all kinds of funness. A lot of calcium comes out of this, which is really kind of nifty. We're going to revisit this one again when we talk about the biogenesis. But most of these are found around these. It would be a delicious white smoker. So you can see all the uh, white water coming out of it. And a lot of these are found around here because you have these really cool organisms that have a lot of calcium carbonate on their shells. And it gets into the water, it gets into solution, and then precipitates out from chemical reactions. You're also going to find a whole lot of evaporates. Evaporates are different types of chemicals that uh, you get when water evaporates. Uh, sodium halide would be one of the biggest ones, and sodium chloride would be another one. You'll find these mostly in areas of very low circulation where the water has plenty of time to evaporate. Halite, gypsum, which is the primary ingredient in drywall and other things, and calcium sulfate are the three main types of evaporates that are worth good amounts of money. If you're feeling frisky, Google on up some more things that they do, post them in the forum under the question guys of, did you know that this does that? And here's a good example of an area where you're going to find a lot of evaporates. You'll see the water being the lighter blue color over here is going to be a lot warmer, a lot more shallow, so you have a lot more evaporation. When you get cut off, you can see that it's got all this body of land, so it's going to be cutting it off from the rest of the ocean over there. That'll cause low amounts of circulation, so the water basically sits there, gets kind of rank and stagnant, but it evaporates and gives you lots and lots of chemicals. And that's it for hydrogenous sediment.